Hi, this is Tahir and I will be your instructor in this course. We are going to learn fundamental concepts of computer science taught in computer science majors in universities. In this lecture, we will begin by introducing what computer and computer science is. And then we will look at the development and history of computer science, keeping in view the history of tools that have led to the development of modern computer. First thing I am going to emphasize here is that learning to use a computer is not same as learning computer science. Computer is just a device or tool to solve problems. Or as you might have heard the conventional definition that computer is an electronic device which stores data, retrieves data and processes it. Whereas computer science is the study of principles that computer uses to solve our problems. Or we can say that it is the the study of computation methods it uses to solve our problems. Computer science and engineering, computing or informatics refer to the same field or discipline of the study. So do not be confused by the different names of the subject. Essentially, computer science is the science that deals with the theory and methods of processing information in digital computers, the design of computer hardware and software, and the applications of computer. So what a computer science student should learn in this course and any other course? Peter Denning suggests that computer science practitioners must be skilled in following areas. First one is algorithmic thinking, that is, you must learn how to use algorithms to solve problems with a computer. Second one is representation. Representation refers to, refers to techniques to store data so that it can be processed efficiently. Then we have programming. Programming refers to writing co code or creating software. While writing code, you will need to make use of algorithms and understand how computer is going to process your instructions. That means you will have to combine algorithmic thinking and your knowledge of representation to create softwares or programs in a computer. Design embodies above three areas to create hardware and software that is easy to use and learn. When you say the word computer, you mean the device that you use for communicating, maybe for enter entertainment, or maybe at work. We will use the word computing system to refer to a system that is used to solve problems. A computing system is composed of hardware, software and data. Hardware is any tangible or physical component of the system. While the software is a set of instructions given to computer to perform a specific task. And data is the facts or figures that are provided by the user that computer processes. A computing system consists of the following layers. We will learn these layers one by one from bottom to top in this course. From bottom, first layer is information. Then we have hardware, programming, operating system, applications, and communications. Information inside a computer is represented in the form of binary numbers, that is digits 1 and zeros. To understand how computer process information, we must understand binary number system and its relationship to other number systems. All types of information, text, numbers, images, audio, video have to be represented in a computer using specific methods. All this information is to be converted to binary numbers, that is streams of bits, zeros and one or binary digits. Hardware refers to the electrical or physical components of the computer. A modern computer's circuitry is mainly built of transistors. Transistors act like switches and control the flow of electrical states in a computer. At fundamental level, these transistors are used to make logic gates and eventually these logic gates are used to make components like central processing unit and memory of the computer. While computer hardware is manufactured, it is programmed in machine and assembly languages. A machine language is built into the circuitry of the computer. It is based on instructions written in ones and zeros form. Assembly language uses words and symbols to give instructions to the computer. Instructions in assembly are translated to machine language by a program called assembler. Fourth layer in computing system is operating system layer. This layer uses a software that manages system resources. This software is called operating system. Examples of resources can be processor, memory, and I.O. devices. 
operating system combined with other softwares that make use of resources or manage resources are combined into one, uh, one software called system software. Common operating systems in use are Windows, Mac OS, Linux, etc. A user interacts with computing system at application layer using an application software. Application software is used for solving real-world problems. These softwares can be used to design real-world objects, play games, solve problems of a specific, a specific field, and do many other kinds of tasks. Almost every area of computer technology uses a specific application softwares to make use of computers. At communication layer, we will understand how computers communicate with one another. In order to make communication possible using computers, computers are connected to networks. Internet, which is the network of networks, is the result of advancement in the computer communication technology. World Wide Web is the latest technology which uses internet to provide access to all kinds of information. Abstraction is one of the most important concepts in computer science. While using computer, you do not think about how it does its various functions. You often do not care how software or hardware of computer works when you are using a computer. Abstraction in computer science is the process of hiding complex details and showing information necessary to accomplish a goal. For example, to drive a car, we don't need to know how engine works or how pedals and steering work. Information hiding is the same concept as abstraction. While abstraction is the external view of a system, information hiding refers to the internal structure of a system or a program. It is a technique that specifies how can one part of a program or code can be hidden from another part of program or code. Aim of information hiding is to separate program parts to hide sensitive details. Abstraction is used at all the layers of computing system discussed previously. While working with one layer of the computer system, you don't have to know how lower layer or upper layer in computing system work. For example, while using internet or communicating, you haven't tried to think about how computers connect, send, and receive information. Understanding abstraction is key to understanding the computer science. To understand computer science, it is necessary to learn about the history of computers. In simple terms, computing refers to the calculations performed using arithmetic. We will start the history of computers with very famous calculating device of the past, Abacus. Abacus is used for recording numeric values and performing basic arithmetic. It was believed to be first used by Chinese, but it was common until early 20th century. Abacus had beats in rows. Each row represented a specific value of a digit. While Abacus was still commonly used in 16th century, a French mathematician, Blasey Pascal, created a mechanical calculator which performed whole number addition and subtraction. Pascal's calculator performed only two operations, addition and subtraction. A German inventor, Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz, invented a mechanical calculator which performed whole number addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In 18th century, Joseph Jacquard invented loom for weaving clothes. Loom used a series of cards punched with holes as input. Holes in cards used specific colored threads for designing pattern in clothes. Although it was not a computing device, but it introduced idea of cards as providing input. In 19th century, Charles Babbage designed difference engine and provided notes for designing analytical engine. This was the first machine that introduced concept of memory so that intermediate values did not need to be re-entered. Making use of punched cards from Jacquard looms, Jacquard's loom, his machine could also take inputs. Famous programmer Ada Lovelace worked with Babbage on his machines. At the end of 19th century and beginning of 20th century, many inventors appeared. William Burroughs built and sold a mechanical calculator. 
Dr. Herman Holreth invented first electromechanical tabulator. Dr. Herman Holreth later founded famous company, popularly known today as IBM International Business Machine. Until the beginning of 20th century, there was no theoretical development in computing devices. Before World War II, Alan Turing developed an abstract mathematical model called Turing machine. A Turing machine uses predefined set of rules to determine result from input values. Although a theoretical concept, but it showed how computers can be used to solve complex problems. After Alan Turing's mathematical model, theoretical and practical development started to happen at the same time in the field of computer science. In 1937, George Stibitz constructed binary adder using relays at Bell Labs. A relay is an electronic switch which provides a control signal based on number of inputs. In the same year, Claude E. Shannon published a paper which discussed implementing symbolic logic using relays. Conrad Zeus, a German inventor, built first mechanical binary programmable computer in 1938. In 1943, Thomas Slower built programmable electronic digital computer. In 1944, Harvard Mark I was introduced. ENIAC, electronic numerical integrator and computer, was introduced in 1946. This was the first computer in, in history. John von Neumann served as a consultant in building of ENIAC. In 1950, ADVAC was introduced. It was followed by first commercial computer called UNIVAC-1 that was used to predict election results. Mathematician John von Neumann also worked on these machines. From this point on, history of computer hardware is categorized into generations. This was the time when computers used vacuum tubes and relays. In 1950s, first commercial computers were introduced. This was the first generation of modern computers which started from 1951 to 1959. Computers in this generation used vacuum tubes to store information. Primary memory devices was magnetic drum that rotated under read or write head. Input device was a card reader that read the holes in IBM cards. These are the same cards used in Jacquard's loom. Output device was punched card and line printers. In later years of this generation, magnetic tapes were introduced. Magnetic tapes stored data sequentially. Magnetic tape was first auxiliary or external storage device for a computer. Word peripherals was used first used in this generation for input, output and auxiliary storage devices. Second generation of computers is counted from 1959 to 1965. In this generation of computers, biggest invention was transistor. Transistor replaced vacuum tubes, vacuum tubes in computers. It was invented by John Bardeen, Walter H. Burton, and William B. Shockley. Computer memory in this generation was made from magnetic cores. Each magnetic core stored one bit. Cores were strung together to form memory cells. These cells made immediate access of memory possible that was not possible with the drums. In this generation, auxiliary storage device magnetic disk, disk was introduced. It is faster than magnetic tape. In magnetic tapes, you have to go through every piece of information sequentially to access a specific information. In magnetic disk, each piece of data has, has its own address. Read or write head immediately access information based on the address of a cell. Third generation of computers starts from 1965 to 1971. In this generation, integrated circuit chips were used. All the components along with transistors of a computer were interconnected on a single silicon chip. Gordon Moore, a computer scientist, noticed that each year number of circuits placed on IC were doubling. His observation is known as Moore's law. In third generation, transistor became number one choice in making computer components. Logic gates built with transistors were used in building memory and other circuits of computer. Although memory built with transistors was very really fast, but it was volatile, so auxiliary storage devices were still needed. Terminal and input and output device with a keyboard was introduced in this generation. Fourth generation of computers starts from 1971. This generation was characterized by large scale integration of transistors on a chip. From individual transistors on circuit board, whole microprocessors or micro 
computer chips were embedded on a circuit board. Phrase personal computer also entered into the dictionary in this generation. New tech companies in this generation were Apple, Atari, Commodore and Sun. In this generation, popular computers were IBM PC and Apple's Macintosh. Large computers, also known as workstations, which were connected to multiple terminals, was, were also introduced, introduced in this generation. In this generation, computers' internal instruction set was also modified. Risk architecture, reduced instruction set computer was also introduced in this generation. In this generation, Moore's law was modified twice. In third generation, Moore's law stated that number of transistors on a chip doubled each year. But in fourth generation, because chips were integrated on circuit boards, so chips, chip density kept doubling after every 18 months. Latest development in computer science has shown that it has been noted that computers will either double in power at the same price or halve in cost for the same power every 18 months. Since computers are still produced using integrated circuit chips, there is no big difference between 4th and 5th generation. But currently, number of transistors have increased tremendously on a single chip. From a few thousand transistors, modern computers have millions of transistors on a single chip. It is also known as very large scale integration or ultra large integration of transistors. Besides ultra large integration of transistors on a chip, modern computers come with multiple chips in a single processor. This phenomenon is also known as parallel processing in computers because more than one processors can work on a single task at the same time. And artificial intelligence is a very hot topic in this generation, hot topic of research in this generation. Since the first commercial computer, software has evolved more than the hardware of the computer. Understanding evolution of software is necessary to understand the working of modern software. First generation of software is considered to occur at the same time as the first generation of computer devices. Instructions were written in binary numbers, also known as machine language of the computer in this generation. These languages are built, in, built into hardware while hardware is manufactured in a factory. Since writing programs in machine language was harder, assembly languages were developed to make writing programs easier. These languages used mnemonics to write instructions. Instructions were translated into machine language by a program called Translator. Assembly languages assembly language acted as a buffer between the programmer and machine hardware. In this generation, a system programmer and an application programmer were the same jobs. Only the computer people who could program computers were the users of the users of the computer. Second generation of software came with human-like computer languages known as high-level languages. Popular languages developed in this generation were Fortran, which stands for Formula Trans Translation. It was developed for mathematical purposes. COBOL, Common Business-Oriented Languages, which was developed for business purposes. And LISP, which stands for List Processing, was created for artificial intelligence purposes. In this generation, system programmers and application programmers had different jobs. This picture represent, represents concept of abstraction in computer science. That is, programmers working with high-level languages don't have to care about how assembly language or machine language in a device works. In first and second generation, computer resources were of no concern to system programmers because instructions for each piece of hardware were written separately. In third generation, to make computers more efficient, computer resources were put under the control of computer. To do that, a software called operating system was developed to manage computer resources. Utility programs, linkers, loaders, translators, and operating system were combined and named as system software. Utility programs are programs designed for general support of the processes of a computer. A loader's job is to load programs into memory and linker links pieces of large programs together. An assembler translates assembly language program into machine language and a compiler translates high-level language code into the code that can machine understand. Idea of time-sharing systems emerged in this generation because of operating system. 
many users with terminals could use the same system. Often this system was large machine like workstations. General purpose application programs in this generation were writ written like a stat statistical package for the social sciences SPSS. In third generation, system programmer, application programmer and user were three different entities in the world of computers. This picture represents how system software provided abstraction to the user and the application programmer. In fourth generation of computer software, a structured programming technique was introduced. Pascal, Modular 2, BASIC and C were popular structured programming languages. C++ was also introduced in 1980s. It was a structured programming language with a bit of extra object-oriented functionalities. Popular operating system in this generation were Unix, PC-DOS for IBM computers, and MS-DOS for many general computers. In this generation, first time mouse, were, mouse was introduced. Apple introduced its point-and-click graphical user interface using a mouse that used a mouse. In this generation, popular regular user application softwares were spreadsheet programs like Lotus 1, 2, 3 and first word processing program like WordPerfect and a database, small database program like D DBase 4. Modern day, these softwares are bundled into suite called Office, MS Office, Libra Office and OpenOffice are some examples. In fifth generation, object-oriented programming, World Wide Web and Microsoft software technologies emerged. Popular programming languages in this generation are Java and C++. Tim Berners-Lee created hypertext markup language in 1991, which became the foundation of modern World Wide Web. Mosaic, later known as Netscape, was first browser in this era. Modern day Firefox browser is based on the first Netscape or Mosaic browser. In fifth generation, self-published writers emerged because of blog enabled websites like Blogger and WordPress. And dynamic content creation websites like Wikipedia, YouTube, and many others allow users to create and share content related to education, entertainment, and hobbies. Social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter have been used by billions of people to share text and graphics information using computers. From first generation, role of user in computers have always been, have always been changing. First generation user was a programmer. In second generation, system programmer wrote tools for application programmers. In third generation, application programmers used tools written by system programmers to write programs for non-programmers or users. And in fourth generation, computer became popular among all types of users. And in fifth generation, besides using computer for different purposes, computer users started to create content for other users. That's all for today's lecture. In this lecture, we introduced computer science, learned about the history of computer devices and history of computer software.